Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Greetings to you again this morning, my faithful listening audience. And I'm thankful to be able to greet you again this morning on this New Year's morning. And thankful to God that he has blessed us to see the beginning of a new year. It is now 2023. And God has been faithful to us in the past year. There were many things that he has done for us. And maybe all our wish list has not been filled. But in God's time, he will bless you with the things that you want in your life. But here we are again this morning in a brand new year. And we can hope for God's blessing to be with us as we journey through the days of this new year. We don't have any guarantee that we will be here to usher in another year. But one thing I can uh, say that we can do each day that we live, let us be thankful. Let us live that day to glorify God. Let us enjoy the day, as the song says, one day at a time. So let us not be over anxious, but enjoy the day that the Lord has given you each day as they come. And I'm sure if you do that, every moment of your life will be blessed and you will be um, enjoying the experience of your life as you journey through this year. So let us be grateful and thankful for the blessings of this the beginning of a new year. Again, thank you for tuning in. And I trust that as we begin a new quarter this morning, that the subject of this quarter, which is um, entitled Faith and Miracles, that we will find uh, more meaningful, uh, what should I say, purpose in our walk with God. And each one of us is here and each one of us has a requirement of God to please him. And the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So whatever level of, of faith you may have, use it to the honor, to the praise, and to the glory of God. And ask him to give you more faith as you live for him. So today's lesson is entitled Living Faith. Living Faith. Let us have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for your blessings again this morning. You have brought us over the threshold of our um, year that has passed into a new year. We thank you, dear Lord, for the opportunity that we have again, that we can continue to serve you. We can continue to do your work, dear Lord. We can continue to journey with you, dear Lord. And I pray, dear Lord, as we journey with you through this year, that we will draw close to you, dear Lord, that we will find the peace and joy and happiness in our walk with you, dear Lord, as we find ourselves, dear Lord, opening up our, our lives, dear Lord, more to you and allowing you, dear Lord, to come into our lives and give us what we need to be more productive, to be more happy and joyful and to have a more triumphant 
walk with you. So bless us, dear Lord, as we go through this year. Prosper us in every way, dear Lord. Bless our families, bless our business, bless our, our, our health, dear Lord. Keep us, dear Lord, under your guidance. And may this year, dear Lord, be one that everyone will have to, um, can look back and say that God has been good to me again. He has led me through this year and has blessed me tremendously. So we thank you for what you're going to do for us. Bless us now as we go into this lesson. Let your Holy Spirit take control and lead in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, living faith. Um, what is faith? The Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and that evidence of things that are unseen. Faith is the substance we have in our hearts that cause us to believe. I'm sorry, faith is the assurance we have in our hearts that cause us to believe God will do that which his word has declared of him. Though today we may not have received the thing that we asked of God, yet faith that wavers not is as good as to us as the thing itself. Faith keeps, assures the soul when the enemy, Satan, pours in his lies and depressions. So faith is that part of our belief system that there is a God and it takes faith to believe that, that there is a God. And once we can have that faith to believe that there is a God who has created the universe, in which we live. If we can have that much faith to believe that, it will help us to believe other things. Because if we can understand that it is a supreme authority and personality that has created all these things that we see around us and enjoy and is a part of and exists among. And it continues to, 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 to grow and it continues to evolve and we don't see anyone behind it, but we believe that there is a supernatural power there that is in control of it. If we can get ourselves to that place that we understand that, it won't be difficult for us to have faith in other areas of our lives. And especially when it becomes very personal, uh, it's easy, may, more, or it may seem more easy for us to say, yes, I believe there is a God. Most people will tell you that. But then when it comes to the place where we have circumstances in our lives that we need to exercise that faith on a personal level, then that might change the situation. But it does not have to be because if we believe there is a God, it is he who has made us and the world and all things that there is in. Then we can resign our anxiety, our fear, our unknown to the same God. Because it is he who has made us and he knows everything about us. And he can take care of every situation 
that we have our a need of, okay? So let me encourage you with that. God understands us. He understands everything about us. He is our creator. So let us be bold and reach out to him in faith, okay? Uh, now we have in our lesson here uh, a few scriptures and I would like to read Hebrews 11 going through verse 6. Uh, I read those six verses there first. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it the it and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Speaking of Abel there. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And verse 6, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Very beautiful verse of scripture there. This tells us where faith belongs. But without faith it is impossible. Without faith it is impossible to please God. So we cannot please God if we don't have faith. For if we come to God, we must believe that he is or that he exists. And not only that he exists, but that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So we see here that we need to exercise our belief that there is a God and then we, that will help us to come unto him. And when we come unto him, we, are, we believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. He will reward us for seeking him with diligence. And that's what it is going to take for us to have this living faith. Diligence, right? We have to be diligent and purposeful in our, uh, our, our belief in God. Not just when we want something done, then we're going to pull out faith out of the, the hat, as it were. But we need to diligently seek him and walk with him so that our experience will be a live one. We're talking about living faith. Man is a very dependent creature. Having no creative power of his own, he lives by the things that he finds in the earth. Sometimes man gets into a place where the necessities of life are scarce. 
making hardship. Under such circumstances, he has to look to a, prop, a power greater than his own in order to survive. However, there are some who do not know God and are aware of the power of faith in the name of Jesus. It is our purpose to set before you the truth concerning faith in the name of Jesus Christ, that all may know what God's word offers to saints and sinners. And the writer here says, it seems proper here to point out that all the miracles that occur in these days are not the result of faith in Christ. Satan has been using his power to perform miracles and thus casting people or causing people to think the, the many false religions are of God. Therefore, however, very necessary it is that we try the Spirit. As God has said to the term to sorry, as God has said to determine whether they be of God. So it's not that the writer here is being negative of the statement that they said there about um, not all miracles are wrought through God. That's the fact. Because we know that Satan is a powerful being too. And he tries to imitate and manipulate and transform himself, the Bible tells us, as an angel of light to make people believe that he is the God and he will be successful in doing so as long as people accept his guise. But what did the scripture says here, uh, the writer says here, and the scripture um, supports it? We are to try the spirit. And if our spirit is of God, God will witness to us whether that situation that you might encounter, whether it is of God or not. Because my spirit, the Bible says, bears witness with your spirit. Okay, So God is a faithful rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And God is not going to lead you into something wrong if he knows you're diligently seeking after him. He is going to defend you through his Holy Spirit and help you to understand that the direction you're going in is not of his calling or his approval, okay? So, living faith. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Um, and through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed and the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things that do appear. Now, um, it is entirely impossible for any man to comprehend how to how so vast a system as the earth, the sun, the moon, and the stars could be brought into existence by speaking the word. Since man within himself does not have the power to create anything, but by belief in the great and all-powerful God, we can get understanding. The earth and all created things were made of things that do not appear. In other words, invisible things. He who has arrived at the place where he can, with his whole heart, believe that the great creative 
hand of the Almighty God made the earth is in a position to begin to believe God for other things that shall appear in his life. I mentioned that earlier, right? So we need to have that living faith so that we can reach out. And like I said earlier, especially when things are very personal to us, it's, it, it's, 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 it's a difference when you have to go through some things and experience certain things than when somebody is telling you of their situation or maybe somebody's asking you to help them pray for their situation because you're not experiencing what they're going through. You do not know exactly how it feels or what they are going through. But we can be supportive, yes, by praying and believing that God will intervene. But the one who is really going through that situation at the time has to be anchored um, in their faith and or be encouraged to reach out for more faith. And there's where we can be supportive by giving that encouragement, by praying and um, reading scriptures and helping that person to have a living faith, okay? So that they can go through what they're going through um, with your help and with understanding more about how God sees them and cares for them, okay? Now, um, let's look at uh, which scripture here now? By faith. Um, let's look at Ephesians 6 and 16. It says here, Above all things, taking the shield of faith, wherein we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, <clears throat> Excuse me. The devil, as I said earlier, he is a powerful being. And he is in competition against God and righteousness. And he does not like for any of us to triumph and to live successful. It is his plan to weakness. It is his plan to confuse us. It is his plan for us to surrender to him. But the Bible encourages here that with this faith that we're talking about, this living faith that we're talking about, that verse of scripture, I'll read again. What does it say? Above all, it was talking about some other things, but and above all those things, it says, take the shield of faith. The shield, what's the shield? A shield is a, 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 a part of an armament that you use to keep yourself protected, right? Back in the day when they used to fight with sword and the shield, it's this big um, piece of material that they hold in one hand and the sword in the other hand, and they use this shield to keep the enemy's sword from reaching to them, to injure them, okay? So it said, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. To quench, to keep off, to defend, to um, prevent the enemy's fiery darts of to, um, getting to us. So we need to have that shield of faith, okay? That living faith in order to be successful in our Christian walk and development. 
Now, um, there was a time when Jesus' disciples went out and they were asked to pray for a young man who had a problem and to demand that this possession that this young man was in be rebuked. And they did what they could or what they thought they should do. And they came back to Jesus. And Matthew 17, 19, give this account. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart. They took him apart. In, took Jesus aside and said, Why could not we have cast out the devil or the, the, the situation out of this young man? And Jesus replied to them is, and Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to your So we see there that the disciples did not have enough faith for the task that was at hand. Yes, every one of us have some measure of faith, but there are some things that a little faith is not going to work to give us the result. And Jesus plainly told them here that their faith was inadequate. They did not have enough faith. Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, you didn't exercise more faith. For verily I say unto you, if he have faith as a grain of mustard seed, he shall say unto this mountain, remove hence yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible. So it is quite evident here that the disciples had very little faith in trying to master this situation. We have to be in the right place. We have to have the right measure of faith in order to see the results of some things that we might be seeking after. So I would encourage that we examine the level of our faith. We examine what our desires are. If we have enough faith to reach and to gain, to accomplish those things that we are desiring. If we do not have it, then we should seek more faith, right? Because it says here, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we need to have that diligence to seek so that we can get results. So I trust that as we go through this year, it's the days and weeks, um, months ahead of us is unknown. And we are going to be tested. Our faith is going to be tested. It's just about every day. But not every day is going to be the same level. There are some other times that we're going to have to dig deep. We're going to have to reach out more. We're going to have to peel back and take inventory of ourselves and see if we are in the place that God wants us to be in for what we are facing, how the result will be. And if we find that we are not where we should be, it is our responsibility 
to get in place so God can use us, so God can deliver unto us those desires that we have. And let us be thankful. Let us give God praise whenever he comes through and give us the victory. So, there is a living faith. And just like we live every day, we need to live that faith and live it out, practice it every day, and try to strengthen it and, and, and increase our faith so that we can see greater results in our Christian walk, in our relationship, in our experience with God, so that we can be stronger Christians and we can um, feel the power of God in our lives and magnify him. So may God bless you as we go through 2023. May, he, may God empower us with what we need. He will help us, but I always try to remind you, we have to do our part. Don't expect God to lift all the load. We have to help him lift this, the, the situation too by doing our part. God bless you. Have a great week ahead of you and enjoy this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for this living faith that we have. I pray, dear Lord, that you will increase our faith, dear Lord. Help us, dear Lord, as we walk daily that we will find time, dear Lord, to reach out to you, to thank you, to uh, praise you, dear Lord, to commune with you, dear Lord, to meditate upon spiritual things, dear Lord, and to exercise our faith and be grateful unto you, dear Lord, and have compassion on others too, dear Lord. So bless us, dear Lord, and help us, dear Lord, that we will live in the center of your will, and that we will exercise our faith daily as we live this life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great week.